you don't get raptured. Oh no! Hello, Raptor Hotline. We're still here. Are you? What will you do if you don't get raptured? But I thought I was going.
you need to have the realization that your faith doesn't end because the rapture begins. It doesn't end because it did happen or it didn't happen. Your faith is assured, irregardless of what you do in respect to if you become snatched away, if God walks you away like Enoch, if God takes you away, or if somehow today you die in faith to be with the Lord, because you go to be with Him. You see, the rapture, in some ways, is like dying. Bingo. Boom. You drop dead. Or you get hit by a car. You don't know the day or the hour when you're going to die. So, in some ways, the rapture is like that for you. Because you're snatched out of your body. You're rescued from that dead flesh. And you were taken to be with the Lord. We would say in the air, but you're in the heavens. So, there is that part of dying that you don't fear because it's a rapture for you. But there is still yet that event, that harpazo, natsal, uh, rapturos, you know, Greek, Hebrew, and English, that is snatching away of the bride as the Holy Spirit seems to pull and withdraw from the earth because he was the restrainer and people will argue about all these things just like this little duck. You know, they're going to say, no, 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 no. And the reality is, is that God is the restrainer. I don't care if you call him the Holy Spirit. I don't care if you call him the, the Spirit of God. I don't care if you call him the church itself. I don't care what you use to be the restrainer. The point is, it's God doing it. We know that. The scriptures say so. So because the scriptures say so, pick God and you're all right. How? Well, then you can debate. Stupid as that is. But what will you do if you don't be raptured? Do you have an exit plan? Do you have a strategy? Has your faith been built upon the realization that your relationship with Jesus is more important than the rapture? Because you see, if the rapture is more important than Jesus. Could it be that God, in the letters to the seven churches, as he described all seven, only comforted one with the reassurance that they would be the ones that he would take? And the rest were told, blessed are you if you overcome. Why would he tell one church that they would be cast into great tribulation if they weren't going there? Why would he choose to tell those that they would be put into suffering, that they would go into tribulation, that they would go through these challenges, but that if they overcame, they would be blessed? Could God have covered those that don't believe in the rapture because they aren't going, as well as covering those who believe in the rapture that didn't go, as well as those that are experiencing or did experience the rapture and are gone? Could grace really apply that deeply to cover all of them? Could the Word of God actually overcome all of man's contradictions by proving God doesn't contradict himself? But that every man himself is mistaken, but God is faithful and true? You see, there are people that are going to go into the tribulation period. It might be you. It might be me. I don't know. Paul himself said, pray you be counted worthy to be spared all these things that are going to come upon the world. Jesus himself said the same. We are not assured or promised deliverance. Unless, you know, you're reading the letters to seven churches, you know, and you kind of flip into there and you go, hey, you know, I'm not Laodicea, I'm not this and I'm not that, but man, am I like this. Well, if the Holy Spirit confirms to you <laughs> that you're like that church. And you could apply the two will be taken, one will be left, and the ten virgins, you know, and you kind of subdivide the church into ten and split it by two, you know, and you kind of nail it down. Could be you. Because you see, this idea that every Christian going to heaven isn't true. It's true, they may wind up there, but how they get there isn't guaranteed or promised in the idea that the bride is all Christians that call upon the name of the Lord. Frankly, Mormons call themselves Christians. Are they? 
There are a lot of people that use the word Christian very liberally. The point is, in the bride, and in the virgins, and in the friends of the bridegroom, and in those that were looking for the Lord's return, five were taken and five were left. And you can play with that and try to make it into something that's not, but if they're looking for the Lord and they're looking for the thing and the whole thing is the marriage supper and we all know that kind of it fits, you know, and you can try to pretend like it doesn't, you try to make it into something it's not or whatever. But God knows. And so you should know as you think about that thought today. What happens if you don't go in the rapture? And I am speaking to those that believe in it. Because those that aren't going or don't believe in the rapture probably are going to get raptured just for God to chalk them out of their shorts. <laughs> Literally. Imagine a naked person in heaven. <laughs> oh, they're robed. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, well. But the person who expects to be raptured and doesn't have a relationship ongoing with the Lord, I would question whether they are going to be automatically taken just because they believe in the rapture but don't believe and have a relationship with Jesus. It's not a question of how well you maintain it, but it's a question of God's will for you. So, you need to examine yourself to find yourself in the faith, like 1 John says, but then also examine your relationship with Jesus to find out, will he say to you on that day, depart from me, I never knew you? Or will he say for you, be an overcomer, because I told you to stay where you are, or will he tell you, blessed are those who overcome? Or will he tell you, come ye, blessed are my father? You see, God has an option. And you are not the dictator of his will. But you are the recipient of what he decides for you. So you can have a great assurance that if you go into the tribulation period, you can overcome. For they overcame, how? By the word of their testimony and the blood of the Lamb. And they love not their lives, even unto death. That is what Christianity is today. It is what it will become in the tribulation. It is what it was in the very early church. They overcame by the word of their testimony, the blood of the Lamb, and they love not their lives, even unto death. You need to think about what you will do if you don't get raptured. Because the blessing might be for you that you would be a martyr for Jesus. And frankly, that might mean today and not tomorrow. Divine restraint. Is my hand shortened that it cannot save? No. My power to save increases as your power to understand my salvation increases. So from strength to strength, from power to power, from glory to glory, we go in union. I reveal to you as I choose for you to understand what I am revealing, as you are able to handle that which I have shown you. Limitless is my miracle-working power in the universe, though it has limitations in each individual life, but only to the extent of the lack of vision of that individual because I still operate and I still do, but they do not see how I do what I do as I've done it, unto them, through them, with them. There is no limit to my power to save. Also, there is no limit to my desire and longing to save. My hand is not shortened and it is stretched out still, longing and waiting to be allowed to bless, help, and save those who, despite themselves, should it be that they call upon me, I shall save. For those that call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Think how tenderly I respect the right of each individual soul, never forcing upon it my help or my salvation. Perhaps in all my suffering for humanity, that is the hardest thing that I have ever done. The restraint of divine and patience and longing to help until the call of the soul gives me the right to act on their behalf, to choose to help them to discover life and life eternally. Think of love shown in this, compassion and mercy. Comfort my waiting, loving, longing heart by calling upon me, by allowing me to help, by giving me your will that I might guide 
to, to do my will. For it is not God's will that any should perish, but all should come to eternal life. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus, that they should know the Father and know Him who sent Him. Today, you can know that tomorrow is not the rapture. That's the easy part. Because it will not happen. I'm sorry. Rosh Hashanah, 5771. <laughs> September 29th, 28th, more or less, sundown, sunup, you know, right around there. It ain't gonna happen. The trumpet will sound, the shofar will sound, you'll hear it, you'll say, hey, times, they are changing. Yes, we're in the last generation. Yes, you will see all these things accomplished. But tomorrow, it ain't going to happen. So what will you do if you don't get out here? What will you do tomorrow, I pray, is not as important as what will you do if the day comes when some are raptured and you are not. To me, that is more important than you stumbling and falling over tomorrow and you're still around or the next day, or the day that you think during these 10 day periods of the holy days. Because that God can pick you up from, dust you off and tell you, hey, you know, you kind of got a little carried away there with your emotions, but your devotion is good. At least you're looking to me, aren't you? But if you don't get raptured, you know what day or how God chooses to take it to you or bring it to you, what will you do but trust in the Lord? with all your heart. Lean not in your own understanding. In all your ways acknowledge Him and He will direct your path. That burn in your brain, your heart, your soul, your mind. Because you can tell me you love the Lord, you love your heart, soul, mind, strength, love your neighbors, yourself. But unless you trust in the Lord with all your heart, unless you lean not in your own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge Him, He doesn't direct your path. You just love Him and sit around waiting for some deliverance that might not come. Uh oh, you mean I gotta actually be real enough to believe you're real and be honest enough to know that you're talking to me, Lord? You're walking with me, Lord? You're wanting to direct me? Because if you're left behind, if I'm left behind, if this duck's left behind, he's toast. But you know what? We who know the Lord can choose to overcome by the word of our testimony that we trust in the Lord with all our heart, loving not our lives even unto death, that we lean not in our own understanding. That they love the Lord their God and their testimony may not in their own understanding and in all your ways acknowledge it. But read the scripture there that God has given for those that were under the altar that cried out in the book of Revelation that said, How long, O Lord? And John was told by the angel, These are they which were martyred during the tribulation period that they overcame by the blood of the Lamb. You see, the blood of the Lamb extends not just up to the point of the rapture. The blood of the Lamb is that which is in heaven, sprinkled for grace to us. So we apply it by mercy and forgiveness as we overcome by the blood of the Lamb and the word of our testimony and loving not our lives even to death in the point of the tribulation period where because we refuse the mark of the beast, even if you don't get put into that position, the rest will still occur because you might get wiped out by all the wrath that's being poured out upon the world. So, I don't know, and I can't make the choice for you, what you will do. But as for me, if I don't get raptured, I know what's in store, and that's not the important part, but I know what's coming. I'm not going to count the days, but I will do this every day, like today, right now, right here, in this place, in this time, in this season, in this minute, in this hour, that I know of, I will trust in the Lord. 